Hi, it's Badder with Badder's Better Diorama Hacks. Now, I'm going to give some of you a few moments to pick yourselves up off of the floor and recover from shock. <laughs> because you won't have seen this diorama in this put-together state for something like five years now. And you were probably thinking you'd never get to see it again. And you were certainly thinking you'd never get to see it finished. So I'm here to assure you that work will recommence almost immediately that I've published this video. And you'll be able to see it all happening in the flesh, as it were. The downside to all that is that you'll have to put up with my dulcet looks and my English rose accent. For those of you who don't know, this is my ever-evolving dio. And as the focus of this channel will be switching to this work in progress, you might find it beneficial to visit the Brit Modeler website where you will discover that this diorama whip is the highest viewed on that website. And the last time I looked, about three weeks ago, it had 88.9 thousand views. And by now, I should imagine it's either broken or is just about to break the 100,000 views barrier, which is staggering. And you may also discover that the sister diorama to this one, the one which broke away at an early stage and is known as Pit Stop, which features my scratch-built multi-pose ruined farmhouse, is actually in third place with 39,000 views. The simplest way to get there is to type Ever Evolving Dio into a search engine and the first half dozen dozen results, possibly three pages of results, <laughs> I'm joking, that certainly the first result will take you straight to one of the pages on this whip. Which page it takes you to exactly, I can't remember because there are 57 of them. <laughs> Alternatively, you could go to my channel page and in the right hand corner of the banner across the top of the page you'll see a little Brit Modeler logo, a little RAF Rendell type thing with Brit Modeler <laughs> written beside it. And if you click on that, that too will take you straight to one of the pages on the ever evolving Dio whip. And you can peruse it at your leisure, see how I made the indestructible tree, the extending of the mini arts are dens building with plaster casts, the use of craft or hobbyist decorative paper punches to punch out patterns which can be used as leaves, like punching out snowflakes to create the creepers on this wall and also to create general leafage, <laughs> foliage, plants and flowers. Lots of different experiments and trials messing around with techniques and methods, uh, including the plaster dust wash. And the plaster dust wash came about totally by accident during the construction of that building there. So yeah, go there, have a look, skim through if you want to, see what takes your fancy and catch up with all those that are already familiar with this work and absolutely go and have a look around the site, some fantastic modelers on there and who knows, maybe become a member. Yeah, I highly recommend joining the site. but. Come back here. <laughs>
I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of all the things that you're going to see happening over the next few weeks and months. The very first job will be to give this diorama a thoroughly good deep clean because it's pretty much been sat on a table or in a cupboard for the past five years and it has accumulated a hell of a lot of dust, cobwebs and cat hairs and even since I've brought it back out into the light somebody drove past the house the other day and threw a banana skin out of their car window and that's ended up in the bushes as well <laughs> there's a lot of litter in there so I will be giving it a blow with an airbrush primarily to remove the dust sorry I've got a mouthful of chocolate <laughs> I'm diabetic, shut up. Um, yeah, so I'll be giving it a blow with an airbrush primarily to get rid of the dust which is pretty much ankle deep. That's ankle deep in 135th scale. <laughs> and then to give it a vacuum clean on a mid-range setting. And then also to give it a jet wash with water, again using an airbrush. And then finally a good going over with a damp or wet brush in those places that can handle that, which is most of it to be honest. The hedgerow though, when I made that from sea foam, I didn't expect it to last many years at all. I did my best to preserve it. If memory serves me right, I sprayed it with PVA. And whilst it has stood up to five years of erosion, <laughs> decomposition, being attacked by badgers and having owls nesting in it, it hasn't survived prodding and poking at it. Bits have crumbled off as I thought they probably would. And for some strange reason, most of the colour has drained out of all that. I've looked on the floor, it's not down there, and neither is it in the mill stream, which is hidden behind that hedgerow. So I don't know where it's gone. Perhaps it evaporated. I've since learned that had I dunked that in liquid latex and sort of taken the blobs off, that might have been a better idea because it dries and acts like a straight jacket so even if parts do snap the latex holds it in place so that is an option for those of you who insist on using sea foam this was more of an experiment on my part to see whether it could last more than five years <laughs> and that has failed there are some parts which have remained pretty I won't say solid but they're they're resilient I'll save what I can of that hedgerow and then that will become the dense darker deeper parts and then I'll add new foliage bushes and trees to the outside but yeah that certainly will not handle being jet washed brushed vacuumed <laughs> so those will be replaced with indestructible versions using methods similar to that indestructible tree and which I trialled in the ever-evolving diorama whip on Brit Modeler. Whilst they're not in evidence here, they have been aired in public, if you like, on that whip. If you read the whips, you'll know that that tree has now become interchangeable between this diorama and the pit stop diorama and I thought well if I'm going to swap that tree over I may as well make trees for this hedgerow that are interchangeable as well again to alter the look of the diorama and make this diorama multi-pose like the sister diorama 
I'm always on the lookout for materials and products which might come in handy for dioramas and a couple of years ago now I found this stuff which is wire cord just I'm probably doing it with my fingers actually there you go it appears to be made from recycled plastic possibly carrier bags or something like that which is I don't know whether that's sprayed on or sort of twisted around it and as you can see it's blobby and irregular which gives the climbing plant something to grip onto I've just read on there that this is actually climbing plant wire 50 meters costing 3 GBP yeah I'm looking forward to using that it's already got the texture on there so I'll be using that in the construction of the new or improved hedgerow I think that will make an improvement and you can be the judge of that <laughs> the badgers currently nesting in there probably won't be happy about that but you know, I did warn them <laughs> The mill stream, which you won't see because it's hidden behind the hedgerow, still doesn't have any water in it. And in fact, there's more dust in there than there will be water. <laughs> but the mill stream has actually got some really nice weed details. So as I clean that up, you'll see these streamer weeds and things coming into view. Once that's all cleaned up and the hedgerow has been rebuilt i'll be pouring resin in there and then there's a sluice gate here i'll be modeling water pouring over the gate into the channel below because that is set deeper into the diorama that is where the water wheel would be There is a complication in that being an ever-evolving dio, it will evolve and it has evolved even more since you started watching this video. So here's the next evolution. I'll just hit you with it. Did I mention this is called the ever-evolving diorama? There's very good reason for it. I'm going to do a little bit of magic now. And I'm warning you, this is shocking. <laughs> right. One, two, three. Ta da! <laughs> yes, the ever evolving diorama will evolve even more, and I will be able to swap the ruined farmhouse for the Ardennes building. Thanks to absolutely everybody who has followed and contributed to this diorama whip. I can assure you that this diorama would not exist if it weren't for your kind comments, tips, advice, your support, the camaraderie and the laughs. To those of you there who've come here to view this channel, thank you very much it is really appreciated to those who have subscribed wherever you're from <laughs> thank you very much as well and most especially to those who take the time to comment there's a comment section there it's free use it <laughs> if people think there's a better way of doing things please let me know because we're all here to share our knowledge and also to learn from others youtube channels like this aren't really about here's what i've done but i'm going to keep it secret <laughs> as to how i did it now it's all about sharing information stick with me then and let's see if i can manage not to mess this all up <laughs> okay i'm going to call that it for this video 
hopefully it will entice you to watch the next one where weather permitting I'll be taking this outside in the nice fresh air to give it a cut and blow dry <laughs> and hopefully that video will be published in the next two or three days so I hope to see you then take care everybody happy modeling see you soon